to the Cavern of Lost Souls. Alright, so guys, we're going to need some catch-up here. Can I get uh, a recap? Let's let's get a recap going. So those of who could not be here with us can uh, actually catch up. And they know what uh, they're getting themselves into. Quick let's just run. let's just Stop dial it back here if we can here. We're going to dial it back to uh, Crazy Jared. Let's go back Always that back. far. It is a little way back. So, um... We'll start with Horum. Horum, give us some recap as to the events that transpired when you arrived at Crazy Jared's hut. What was going on? So, uh, we got there and okay. figured out his his hut is actually a very obvious attempt to look like a castle. But it, it doesn't. And, uh, alongside this beautiful castle... Uh, there, there's a dragon that was, I was going to say guarding it, but not quite. There was a red dragon that was kind of trying to kill it. Yeah. It was not and happy. so, uh, we aided Jared in, in the, uh, removal of, uh, of the pest. And then he's like, hey, thanks. Want to come into my castle? And then we're like, okay. After we got into the castle, uh, we're like, hey, we're looking to get into this weird place. And look this hold on, hold on, hold on. Store. I feel like you uh, you, you, you kind of glazed over something that was relatively important. Um, the dragon bit. That, yeah, uh, that old dragon part. We you didn't, didn't kill, kill the dragon. Um, it, it just... It just pieced it. It uh, yeah, kind of just almost killed it, and then it was like, nope, I'm getting out of here. All right. Do you know why? Do you know why the dragon was there? I mean, dragons don't just pick fights with random homeless people just because. I mean, he was probably diddling it somehow. He Jared was probably diddling it. So Jared the hobo, crazy hobo at that, was diddling a dragon, and the dragon was cool with it. What, did he just catch him cheating or something? Was he slipping? I, 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 I think it's it's along those lines. I'm more willing to bet that Jared stole the dragon's eggs to make an omelet. I could see that. All right, that's a big ass omelet. Um, yeah. But yeah, I feel but Jared, like Jared would get. Yeah, it's a kingly omelet. It's either that or his house is just way too close to the nest. Slash, Jared may or may not have been throwing things at it. Yeah, I was about to say, he might have just been yelling obscenities as it flew by, and it's just like, yeah, fuck you, dude. Eventually it got tired and decided the, to... The, the you know, Jared Jared, returned Jared. to his house several times asking him to stop dancing with all three of his fingers, and he, he wouldn't, even though uh, the dragon's kids were watching. You, I mean, when you really think about it, Jared kept us up throughout the entire night. Imagine being his neighbor. You'd probably want to blow him up, too. All right, all right, all right, all right. So... Crazy Jared had some kind of spat with a dragon, and somehow he survived. We will say that it's completely compliments to yourself um, and your allies. He gave you some information. What did he tell you? He told you guys some information about uh, some individuals or a place that you're looking for. Uh, I believe he went ahead and gave us information about Zenith Splinter Shield, who mm -hmm. left for the Underdark and give us the location of uh, Bal Hamatugan? Yes. Yes. And yes, he, he called like... he called a specific area that you were to venture to next. Um, he had a very specific name for it. There was no irony in the name either. It was pretty much baited right there. Can the you recall what that name was? Oh, Not quite a thousand. Jaws. The Pit of Seven Jaws. That's right. Seven jaws. That's right. So, um, that being said, what was in the pit of Seven Jaws? A seven-headed hydra. A seven-jawed creature. Yeah. Go figure. We'll Alright. How did that entire transaction go about? Did you guys just, Lovely. like, just walk down, well, just waltz down, you know, completely yep. unbeknownst to yep. the to the cryohydra? 
casually yeah, walked down. You. It was incident and he, free. And he reached a crack. And then it was not so okay. And they were like, hey, you should go in there. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> and then I immediately left in the mouth of Hydra. And uh, yeah, that, that's about how that happened. It took me about uh, 15 feet to the ground and then yeah, we just kind of killed it. Wow. After it went ahead and raffle stumped you. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it was it was a bit of a rough scuffle. Um, why do you think this creature was here? Of all places, house. I'm guessing it was nesting here because it was know. its house. Yeah, it was just a common Hydra, you know, neighborhood. You guys wandered into it, it's, uh, it's, the, the, the was cryo cul de sac, but the gate was open, so we just kind of walked in, and it, it was a really bad neighborhood. We thought we it wandered be into the uh, the cryo cul de sac, and the guy was like. Get off my lawn. And you guys yeah. were brandishing weapons, clearly, so um, that didn't work out well. They were um, just standing their ground. But, all right, you know. so all bullshit aside, uh, you guys did wander into the Pit of the Seven Jaws. You encountered the Cryohydra um, under, you know, after a, a series of rounds, getting ice blown across you, bites, uh, throws, various things, tackles off of um, step sides. You were able to best the creature. And you had went to discover a bit more about its home inside of the wall, the crevasse, if you will. Upon investigation, you found what, Jared? That's, I, I, you, this I is, found you myself a, a, a new friend. A new friend. A new friend. Yeah, so I, did you just I, find like your own Dobby or what? Uh, no. I mean, I, I found my little bunny, Mr. Frosty. Uh, no, when we went ahead to the crack that the Hydra went ahead and yanked Horum out of, uh, we found that there was actually a little baby Hydra. Just one head. And feeling particularly keen to go ahead and preserve this wondrous creature, given the fact that it was probably going to die alone being so young. And Jared, Jared kind of kind of pulled it along, you know? He kind of, kind of semi-adopted it. He semi-adopted it. Okay, that doesn't seem like anything bad could happen there. No, nothing. So I Go thought, on. But, Go on, so tell I me thought, more. But, so as we're moving deeper into the caverns, we went ahead and came across this river and we were kindly escorted across by this ferryman named Abaka. Abaka, and that's right. Was, yeah, and if it's not bad enough that Abaka went ahead and required us to give him shinies at the edge of the river, halfway through he decides he's going to be a real shit and request a, uh, a sacrifice, if you will. He requests the sacrifice. Do you think that this was him just being a shit or him following orders? Both. He enjoyed it way too much. <laughs> Did he like glee and gloat? You know, what What made you think he enjoyed it much? Eh. Gut feelings, gut feelings. Gut feelings, okay. Yeah, he, he wanted my new pet. Why didn't you guys just yes. swim across? Like, what What? Uh, what was the deal because with that? Why didn't you swim? Because there's things in the water. Uh, armor. <laughs> no. There's, it's not the armor. Well, I mean, that would mean that Horn he, would have to take the boat. The rest of us would be fine. That sniper wears plate as well. Yeah, but we're fighters. Our swim checks aren't nearly as bad. There is that. If you say so. <laughs> but I mean, I'm just saying, swimming, swimming in anything more than like, you know, even even in your clothes ain't easy. All right, but all right, with, all right. Uh, so, but that that plus the deadly creatures in the water. That would. Whoa, be nice. whoa, whoa, whoa! What deadly creatures? What what was in the water? Uh, things with tentacles, leeches. Uh, what makes you think more that they they are any more lethal than you are to yourselves? Oh, they, they are. They're, are. They're the same. Yeah, well, it's, it's about equal. It, it's like a you know hundred hundred thing. Okay, all right. I'd like to say, if anything, we're more dangerous to ourselves than anything we've run across just yet. Except for the two, uh, the two pitfall traps in the fifteen foot hallway, that was fucked. Okay, all right. So he said, "Hook me up 
with something else, and I'll let you pass. What did you guys? What would you guys hook him up with? Uh, after, yeah. After after a very long and heated debate, uh, we gave snipers uh, pet hydra to him. He gave him the pet hydra. Um, is that what he wanted? Did he specifically ask for the pet hydra? No, he just wanted something that would worship his god or the the sea mother or whatever it was. Uh, none of us really had a soul on hand that we could do. You know, that we could say, like, hey, we'll, we'll, we'll worship her. He's like, no. So we're like, like, hey, no, you got no hydra. You're already part of the crew. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Klaus, greedy fucker that he is. Yeah, greedy fucker not in his own body. and hasn't been <laughs> for many, many months. Because I totally enjoy that. Mm -hmm. It's so much fun. I just want to hoard all the bodies. That's my goal. Okay, all right. So, you guys agreed to hook him up with the the cryohydra infant. The only reason that you decided to go against that is because why exactly? Why didn't you give him? You know, why didn't you you give him a soul? Because Jared's a whiny bitch. Because Jared's a whiny bitch. See, that seems counterintuitive to the point, though. Like, if he was a whiny bitch, then he would have gotten his way, right? He's just not a good one. All right. Jared, any counterpoint? It was, it was dangerous. Well, you know, I wasn't able to go ahead and step up and provide my soul, even though I offered, because I'm already cursed, or gifted, if you will, with you know the, the joys of the shark, so this, you know, the sea mother is already cool with me. I'm, I'm already part of that fan. You, you... <laughs> All right. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Curiously enough, is this episode uh, 89? Do we have 89 here? Or was this 90? No idea. I think it's 89. Um, but yeah, Sakata didn't have a soul. Yeah, uh, I, I just I, I lost 89. it somewhere. Yeah, suffice it to say, Sakata is really bad at dice. No, it, you have this misconception. I didn't lose my soul because of the dice. I lost gold because of the dice. Um, and then I made a deal, and that's what made me lose my soul. Okay, okay, so he's not very good at dealing either. There you go. Yeah, so well, better, the when it comes to Sakata, expect failure all around. I'm a lot better at negotiating contracts with mortals of this realm, not demigods, or just natural gods in general. Really, anyone that you can't threaten, you're just not good at making deals with. I mean, yes. I like how like you said that. You'd be surprised how often it works. With like almost a lingering question to follow. Like, I mean, yes. With a trailing Maybe, S. I don't know. I never had to go ahead and argue with somebody who couldn't. Go but ahead yeah, and that's like <laughs> that's like Sakata's front right there. That's uh, that's his front <laughs> immediately. Like, if I can intimidate it, I'll get my way or my mm -hmm. money. Most Are you money. basically you're a medieval themed ODB, aren't you? You just. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is. I know it. By the way, guys, the uh, the tweet is out. Go ahead and uh, let people know. Get your retweet up. And we can get that uh, flowing. Maybe we can actually get our players some luck rerolls this evening because they will need it. All right. So you guys got across the river after you gave up um, your tiny little cryo hydra infant. Once you made it across, you started moving up a series of steps. What was at the top of those steps? Details, please. Anyone? When we got into the top of the steps, there was a small antechamber. Uh, to the right was a portocollis. And You're forgetting about the giant, like, serpent frog head statue with giant emerald eyes. Okay, there was a cool archway. But moving on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It was a nice architectural detail. Um, what was yeah, it a detail was of? Was it like a Her rainbow? Coming death. A it giraffe was a skull. <laughs> it was basically an, an an enormous fish skull with yeah, it was, it was looming frog people marking. Looming uh orbit like basically these glowing orbital sockets uh of just flowing incandescent green. And you guys thought it hey, you know, what's the worst that could happen? You know, we've already made I mean, it this far. 
It's just yeah. the fish people's way of saying, uh, abandon all hope, all ye who enter here. <laughs> all I mean, you it's not here. that bad. It's the fish it's just, people you know, saying there's fish people here. Mm -hmm. Hey, 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 I do not judge, I do not judge a rage on its architectural choices. A rage? I mean, we've gone ahead and put out some gaudy shit, too. I don't know about you, but my architectural work is fantastic. I built the entire bathhouse. It is fantastic. You built you built the entire bathhouse. Yeah, you. A, I would you say that you remodeled it to its you correct re, stage. Yeah. <laughs> you remodeled it by luring an enormous clockwork leviathan out of the depths. Like, yeah, we needed a hole there. The air flows Those really tubs weren't going to drain really open themselves. Space up. Yeah, I mean, really, when you have so much air coming into it, it just feels nicer when you get out. Like, yeah, you know, those airy baths you like to take, <laughs> with the breeze running across your naked body. <laughs> I, I mean, it's what I enjoy. It's positively the best. All right, all right, seems good. Being hot and cold at the exact same time. <laughs> mm. Perfect. Okay, so. Once we have gone past the, the entrance, you said to the right, there was a portcullis. To the left, there was like a wavy cloth that seemed to be blocking the light. Um, and then what was Dead before ahead. you in the current room and then directly north? Dead ahead, two statues, one with a giant black orb on where its head would have Yep. Yep. And along the floor, just broken porcelain. Broken porcelain. What was the statue on the left? Dwarf. No. no. Other left. It was um, like a fish. Fish. That's person. right. It was. It was a Kuotoan. It was a statue of a Kuotoan. The right hand side was actually a human slash humanoid. Something closer to a very gaunt or not gaunt. Excuse me. Very stout uh, humanoid, much like that of a dwarf. But because you were missing, missing, missing a lot of the initial facial features you couldn't tell however the black orb had some kind of painting over it something like uh white had been drawn on it to uh emulate that of dwarven features and you had thought maybe that's a dwarf maybe that's zenith splinter shield maybe what else could it be oh, you have any any reason to believe that it could be could I, I meant the the depiction It could, could it be anything else? Could just be a dwarven city, or maybe it no. could have just been a really short halfling, or not no. a short halfling, a very big halfling. It was I a wouldn't... stick picture of the Mona Lisa. A... It was it was a splinter shield, or possibly Mr. Bean. All right, I'm gonna the need. The two are really indescribable. I'm gonna need those of you who have all of your chromosomes and some degree of intelligence to begin speaking, even if you weren't here. All right, I'm Aww. out. <laughs> That's good. That's good. So, um, yeah. What happened here? What What was next? Sniper wanted to put his hand inside of it. No, 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 no. Don't be like that. He didn't no, want to. First, but first and anyways. foremost, I was the only one to notice this black orb. It was like, wow, that is a nice black orb. I'm going to stick my hand in it. I don't, hey, you're skipping steps. You're skipping steps. So I don't think it was so much that you noticed the black orb. It's just that your attention was specifically drawn to the black orb. Yeah, because, you know, I smell danger. Danger is my middle name. So you smell yeah. danger, so you stuck your hand somewhere you couldn't. Mm -hmm. Wow, yeah. you, you, you know, you guys make, or... make it sound like I just, like, lifted the orb and then immediately rammed my fist up in it. Oh, you mean like you did? You did? That, that's no, exactly I what didn't. happened. That that was the exact thing you did. You found yeah, a so hole and you dug it in immediately. He didn't ram his fist in. He gently pushed his fist into its mouth. Hey, 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 hey. He didn't. I'll mouth. give him. I'll yeah. give him one credit. He did not stick his thumb in there. It was just the four fingers. Yeah, and then he can, just can I it around. be the one to describe my failures? <laughs> if no, you do it correctly. Uh, yeah, I mean, if you're. <laughs> I accurate. sit aside while you guys go ahead and do your shenanigans. Let me go ahead and do mine. So essentially, go for what it. Sniper did. What uh, what what uh, Jared did is like there was a bear trap, and then he's like, "Oh, this looks dangerous." So he starts gently trying to rub the spring on it to see how much pressure he could put on it before it goes off, and then it went off. And he was uh, like, I, I went ahead and did a complete Steve when I was like, "Oh man, this is got I want to put my fingers in it." 
Uh, no, I lifted up this orb and okay. it went ahead and made a sound as I lifted it off. And, and while I was inspecting it, I noticed that there was this this crack, this crevice along the bottom. And there, there, you know, I was curious, so I just delicately put my fingers inside, and I felt these, you know, these hard, firm objects. And of course, unsure if these were just trinkets or something left behind by the statue, I go ahead and give a wiggle with my fingers, and um, it turned out to be teeth. Teeth, you say? Well, I, I assume it's teeth. Well, whatever it is, it did kind of, um, it, it, it held on. It, it, it squeezed down, and while, you know, so there I am with a fist in this giant black orb, and, you know, of course, Klaus knows it's magical, but he's just like, oh, keep it up, fam. It's cool. <laughs> And, and when we figure out... Are you really is... trying to put this on me still? <laughs> no, no, no. The rest I'm putting on you. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Uh, so, yeah. When we find out that this thing is not going to come off without um, taking my fingers with it, it's like, well, what, what are we going to do? And of course, there's a lot of discussion about just cutting the hand off because two weapon you know two-handed fighter we don't need both hands yeah you don't you don't need you don't need two hands what's that about yeah yeah and and setting it on fire because that's always been a good idea around us yeah so let me just go dunk it in water instead yeah jared was like you know what maybe it just needs a little bit of lubrication if it's alive maybe it breathes so he goes back downstairs and he decides you know what there's this big river of water i'm just gonna go ahead and submerge it but but then then Here's here's where the beautiful part happens. Okay, go on. Klaus, our illustrious sorcerer, decides to come up and he's like, hey, 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 hey. I got a trick. Let, let me do this. <laughs> All right. And he gets his hands around this orb and he's like, first you gotta go ahead and inspect it. Anyway. You gotta go ahead and do a little of this and a little of that. And, you know, you give a little tweak and pop, open. And shit went downhill. You can try and spin this oh, however you want. It's not making it any less of your fault. So, so the, like, essentially how it played out was Jared walks towards the water, Jared falls in, mm -hmm. Leech Swarm, if I remember correctly, and then Jared blames uh, Cloud. And then Jared blames the only The guy one guy who dove, dove in the water to save his life. To yeah, that's the result, player. he's much worse off. I, I Start, love how starts we skip feeding, over everything else that led starts up to feeding this. Blank jungle. What do you mean everything else? That is <laughs> everything. Well, it turns out that it turns out that what Jared put his fingers in was a mimic. Yeah. And it was not fond of being finger diddled, and even less fond of having spells cast at it. So it decided to uncoil and try and eat my head. And in, in my defense, I was a little panicky, and the steps were wet, and, you know, their old boots low at the heel. I, I slipped. He swung that. I slipped in, 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 into the water. He, he traversed water that he knew nothing about, which probably could have been even more dangerous, but he's like, you know what? I'm going to go in anyway. You know, I mean, if I were able to walk on water, water still, it wouldn't have been a big deal. But I kind of lost that ability. Which I know to, uh, to counter this, he's like, you know what? He's like, I'm going to feed it even more. And he sticks his hand further down this thing. <laughs> oh, God. I mean, I don't think well, it happened exactly like that. I feel like there were some, some details that have been skewed and lost. Um, but it inevitably had you guys moving, uh, moving further into the water, unfortunately. Um, Horum and Sakata stayed... Completely on the steps. Wanted, yeah, wanted nothing to do with that. God forbid these gentlemen with great swim checks and high strengths to do anything at all See, to assist. Say great swim yeah, checks, so Klaus was actually the hero. But I don't have that. It's true. Klaus, Klaus decided to throw himself to the metaphorical wolf, or wolves even, and as he dove out into the water... Covering him his own self in these uh, over oversized leeches, if you will, these blood draining creatures. He was what you were? Were you punched or like there was there was a lot going on? He was struggling I was against you. Upon. Yeah, 
Yeah. But you know what? I have to give I've got to give Jared props. Uh, Sniper did a great job of playing how his character would react in that situation. Um, I think anybody would have reacted similarly. I don't know too many people that would be calm of mind. I know a lot of people were like, come on, man. It's only like five feet of water. Yeah, but how often is your hand in your face being swallowed by a creature while your body is being sucked dry by enormous, like, magical leeches? Like, come on, hit me with some facts here. So, Sniper Thank did a great you. job. Thank you. Sniper did a great job of portraying that particular element, and Klaus did an even better job of getting f uh, flustered and frustrated, causing himself to fly up into the air, zapping himself, um, cast, I mean, it's not like he necessarily cast fly on Jared, but he assisted him over to the side. You guys took a vast amount of damage from oh, yeah. from from these, these creatures. It, it wasn't even just like health damage, it was large sustaining damage to your ability scores some of it was drain in fact i didn't take any health damage it was just yes. all ability score damage yeah it was either damage I, or I was, drain yeah i was the one that took the health damage but um luckily enough we did manage to go ahead and make it back to the steps and once we were able to go ahead and rip this mimic off and kick it back into the water well jared after suffering leeches as often as he did he, he did the only thing that he thought would be the most effective, and he turned to class and he was just like, shock me, you bastard. And he obliged. He did. And and unfortunately, there was a casualty. There was, in fact, a casualty, but at the same time, heated in the situation, I don't think anyone was necessarily prepared for what became over you at that moment. I mean, you didn't have the time to slowly remove your armor and pick all of these leeches away one by one. You needed an effective way to remove these creatures from beneath your magical armor. Um, so, while Klaus may have gone a little overboard, it I, f I feel as if it was slightly due, all circumstances uh, discussed. So then, the last episode. After we had lost our dear Charlotte, after you guys had sustained a vast amount of ability drain and damage. You guys moved upward into the next room where Klaus was unconscious for, I would say, at least an hour of the session. Um, of which he eventually woke up to find what exactly, what had occurred. Um, Horum. Well, we uh, we went through the, the following to the portcullis door. Okay. Um, should I explain the act of going through that? Well, anyways, uh, well, we, we walked up to the portcullis door, and uh, yes. it was it was closed, and so someone started talking from around the corner, and they're like, hey, you need to, you need to pull that lever on the wall there, and uh, okay. it'll open the door for you. And so uh, Jared, being bright-witted guy, he is, pulled the lever. It was you that pulled the lever to open the portcullis, right? Uh, yeah, weird. I went ahead and pulled the wheel to open the porticollis. Okay, yeah. And then put it stuck in the door. Life and limit risk. But yeah, you you're know, welcome. It's cool. You could have pulled it out a little bit faster, but you didn't. Got stuck to the wall. I ducked underneath, let you free, then opened it again without breaking any arms. Yeah, it, it's good to be helpful every so often. Yeah, I, I try to do it at least once per session, but that's usually going too far for me. Mm hmm. Continue on, Cicada, where Horum left off. Alright, so what happened was we had opened up the passageway and we had stepped through and the first thing we saw was a bugbear sitting there, just dazed, kind of wandering around doing nothing. Did you say she's dazed? He, what? Did you say she's dazed? No, I said he's dazed. Okay. It could be a she. Don't. Yeah, I, we how, can't assume. How gender. dare you assume that gender? Um, then there was to the south. There was another prisoner, and he was a halfling, right? Oh, okay. Yes, he yeah, was he a halfling was, on the south end. Yeah, he was a halfling sorcerer who was uh, trying to channel magic, but there were runes on the floor preventing his magic. And in the corner, a squashed up, beat up bug, that uh, he said, you know, we just it, it messes with your brain. But he killed it. Uh, and then I went to the north while Jared talked to him. Uh, and I found a new friend who was completely pale, uh, that of an albino. 
uh, he bit me in a friendship trial. Uh, I told him to let go. Um, I'm not really his friend. He thinks I am, but, mm, you know, down low. Not too proud of being bit. Oh, but you share so well. Yeah, uh, any any patched it up. It's nice and gooey now. Uh, and not because of medical supplies. Uh, Why do you... Okay, so, like, I know that you said it was a friendship trial, but let's be real. Like, like let's drop the candor for a moment. I want to so know I put, what wait, you actually put, think. Is uh, he some kind of ravenous cannibal? Is he crazy? Maybe I mean, he's... I want to push him into the sunlight first. I think he's starved. You think he's starved? Yeah, I mean, okay. that, that too. He was he was consistently saying, like, I'm sorry, this is what happens when they don't feed us, yada, yada, yada. So I threw him a nature valley. Um, he liked that. Sure, um, okay. Not as much as he liked my flesh, though. That he liked. So, he's uh, he's definitely not a uh, herbivore. Definitely not an herbivore. That's, uh, that's, that's true. That's one thing we can knock off the list. Of what he's, he's, also, he's also got a way with words and a way with rats. Yes, he uh, he has really special rat powers, like uh, like Corvo. He's just really good friends with them. He's actually just a rat skeleton. <laughs> oh my um, god! Yeah. And then okay, we, we woke up Will. And then you woke up Will. Now, first and foremost, there was a conversation previously. I think that this was on Horum, but anybody can recap here. What was shared between the halfling? And Horum. There was a lot of threaten, threatening things going around. A lot of questioning. But I feel like there were some things that needed to be said. Oh, oh such as the fact religion. that the halfling is evil. Yeah, he found out that uh, the halfling and the uh, albino. I think he was a uh, apo, right? The uh, albino dude. Oh, 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 oh. That's a, he's a human. Oh, okay. So, yeah, he found out that the... Um, the albino uh, human and uh, the halfling, they, are, they both have horrors of evil. Uh, and he was essentially telling, I believe, Kata to not open uh, the, the port cutlass, or at least the cages, because um, he didn't he didn't trust them. But it kind of came down to a, uh, an issue, I guess, of uh, needing help with getting out. And uh, why didn't he, why didn't he trust him? Because the evil aura that he sensed, and he, he felt that he was uh, lying, but uh, yeah, okay. he said that he had a curse on him. Or he said that the guy at the very end of the hall had a curse on him. Yeah. And, and the uh, guy in the north said the guy in the south was working for the frog people. Yeah, that he was evil. All right, yeah, All right he was so working for the frog people, but the, the guy, who, the halfling, said he was he wants to get out so he can kill the frog people. Okay, all right. So you guys have given me some information. Maybe Klaus can begin to clarify a few things. Klaus, after you had awaken, even like even outside of the game, you were you were bearing witness to the speech between this individual. Um, can you re can anybody recall his name? In either uh, of their names, the names, for that matter. Cannibal. Cannibal was uh, White Eye, and the halfling was. Cherit. That's right. White Eye and Cherit. Um, what was what was Cherit's deal with Horum? Like, Horum said, hey, if you fucking step out of line, I'm gonna blast you, and that's gonna be the end of it. But Cherit was like, bro, aren't you kind of a good guy? Like, what what was that about? What was Can you, can you catch me up on that? Um, um, he was basically, like, uh, using Horum's faith against him, in a way. Uh, or at least to, like, undermine his threats, because according to Horum's religion, uh, he's only supposed to kill things that are evil and uh, negatively influencing the world, as far as I understand it, anyway. Um, okay. And Chariot was basically trying to uh, exonerate himself from being one of those evil creatures. Uh, whether or not that's true, we still are kind of unsure. Basically, Chariot was saying that Horum's a, you know, a douche waffle. He was trying to convince me that what I'm doing by banishing evil is actually just evil because these things aren't aren't bad people because they have evil auras. Because they do evil things doesn't mean they deserve to die. But that's it's it comes down to morals as opposed to whether evil or good. 
and well, remember, in, how, in, how, how it played yeah. out. How it intention. Played out, what he was saying was because you don't because someone doesn't agree with what Saren Ray believes in and what you believe in. Like you, like he says that you essentially target them as a threat, and because of that, you see them as evil. So that's why when you were telling him that he's evil, he's like, "Well, just because I don't agree with you doesn't make me a bad person." Like that's essentially like what it came down to. It's pretty accurate. Uh, just remember that intentions do not necessarily um, indicate alignment, nor does it vindicate your true desires. Um, in this particular situation, you've identified him as evil to one degree or another. Does that mean that you can't work with him, Horam? No, I I have an evil child, and I know that it hasn't done anything evil yet, so I'm going to keep him until he does something evil. Then I'm going to put him somewhere where he can, uh, he can do his own thing. Do you think that Saren Ray will be A-OK -okay with you saving the life of a child that is inherently evil that could potentially kill hundreds, if not thousands, of common people of the faith? If it doesn't kill hundreds of thousands of people... I think she'll be okay with it. It's it's not that it's evil, it's that it has to do evil things for it to go against Sarah Ray. And that's why I was like, okay, I'll let you out, but you do something wrong and whoop that ass. Alright, so what kind of experiences what kind of experiences have you had so far with your infant, if you will? Tell me about your uh, your practices in fatherhood. I'm not a good father. Because I'm never home. But All right, so I ain't leaving this kid. Let me get this straight. You delivered a baby that you knew was evil. Mm -hmm. You dropped it on the doorstep of a church. They said that they would help. You've come back once to find out that it's growing at an enamorous rate. That it's hyper intelligent, has telepathy to a degree, or at least telekinesis. And you're like, this is fine. This is fine. It's cool. It's cool. He's not bothered. It's my mind. baby. All right. That's yep. my baby. I just wanted to clear that up. <sighs> All right. Meanwhile, you guys are supposed to be doing a favor for the church. Can anyone recall what that favor is? Oh, uh, the favor for the church is, I recall, is to go ahead and find. Oh, Lord. You're talking about Rufus? That's right. Rufus. Yeah. You guys are supposed to find Rufus and make amends to get him to come back to the church. Um, yeah, I would say that that's uh, there. There are some accuracies it's, there. It might be a little difficult considering the last time I saw Rufus was when I summoned six skeletons to help me carry the uh, practically lifeless body of Rasasi toward the church after he had transformed into a were shark, and I had to put him down. When I was shark saucy. Okay. And Rufus kind of stormed out of the church at that point and said, Rufus I'm leaving and never coming back. <laughs> you heathens have ruined this town for me. That's it. It's too fucked up. Great. All right. So I'm, I'm actually, I'm really intrigued to hear your arguments when you finally do catch up with Rufus, wherever he may be. Uh, I'm a good man, just not a good dad. Horum 2017. That's, <laughs> <laughs> that's... Excellent. I'll make sure to tell Randa that so everybody is free and clear of, of anything. Jesus. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> God, I'm a good man, just not a good dad. It's like hearing my dad all over again. A little too close to home, I think. 20 years. Maybe just a little. <laughs> that has nothing to do with your skin color. He's just excellent at hide and seek. <laughs> <It's true. laughs> All right, okay, all right, all right. So, catching up here, um, pushing things along, Sniper, as Jared, triggered a mechanism which lowered the gates. More threats were had, Klaus was having a conversation with Jared, and then boom, they're free. What stopped you guys from spilling blood immediately? Um, they were cooperative, first of all. They didn't try to, like, fight us, so we didn't have to, like, slaughter them. Uh, I went up to to the north to see what the fuck Jared did, uh, and White I was like coming out of the cell, and I said, "Don't come out." And he said, "Oh, okay. I'll I'll sit over here." So okay. we didn't really have to resort to violence for once. Yeah, as much as I would have liked to. Yeah, 
I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm always wow. for it. But Klaus the bloodthirsty. The sorcerer is the one that was spoiling for a fight? <laughs> Look, okay, if they had this halfling <laughs> locked up in there with runes to prevent him from spellcasting, there's probably a good reason. Look, we all know here, 89 sessions of playing D&D with Will, Klaus gets the meat sweats when he hasn't spilled blood recently <laughs> enough. <laughs> I'm, I'm awesome at Will's can't see it, but I'm wearing, like, stick shirts right now. <laughs> Keep this dry down here. It's all of them has to be black. All of them black, that's right. All of them black shirts. Conveniently enough, they're all gorilla shirts also, as well. I thought so. I've been putting on Will. weight, but no, it's actually just more shirts. Gotta match on Dark Souls stuff. Oh, I don't know uh, why that shirt looks so much like the Mortal Kombat. Mortal Kombat, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I yeah. can see it. Actually, You're thought saying? it was the. I thought I actually thought that was a Monkey Kill shiny guy when he had it, but uh. <laughs> I'm not uh, that yeah. much of a weird. During, during this whole back and forth uh, prison run debacle that they were having, uh, it was a bugbear that was in there that they just like. Yeah. Let out, and they're like, "Oh, he's not killing anyone yet." So. <laughs> And then he yeah. ripped Card Boris in half. And then that's right, yeah. he ripped Card Boris in half. You guys actually had uh, Oris Faquin in his uh, his cardboard state as what creature? Um, owl bear. An owl bear. Oh, yeah. That's right, an owl bear. And Sakata attempted to communicate with with this this bug bear. Right? Was it Sakata that attempted the communication, or uh, was it someone else? No, I, yeah. I talked to him after. It was uh, it was Klaus. Klaus. It was no, Klaus? It was, oh yeah, that's right. Klaus was I was kinda, trying to uh, show him like hand signal and shit. I, w I was showing him that like Cardboris wasn't actually an owl bear, and there was no yeah. reason to fret. Um, but then he just ripped him in half, so it made our lives much easier. Yeah. So there was. It, he took it as, oh, rip this in half. Show us how strong you are. And and extreme. Like, uh, and he's like, did I do good? As all of us were just like. Extreme yeah, misinterpretation. Yes, extreme misinterpretation. So, now you have two halves of an owlbear in cardboard form, just lying. Yeah, now, so it, now we have two cardboard shields. It inconveniently <laughs> has uh, has a That's sad face. <laughs> well, uh, he had a sad face, but I walked up to him, I gave him a pat and reassured him that he was fine. Where before, the cardboard was in pose with both clawed hands up, and it was just like, ah. Now it's actually like, hands are up in shrug motion with a sad face. Like, no. <laughs> <laughs> so um that's actually where we ended uh and we will be reintroducing these characters uh to a degree we we all know how white eye is we all know how Charit is but then we have this bugbear which nobody really has a name for yet everybody knew that he was one of the more recent additions to the jail but nobody really was aware of his actions he seems relatively simple though he seems like Ed from Ed, Ed, and Eddie. I'm not talking Double D here. I'm talking... He's borderline a mix of, of Ed and Plank. Which is... <laughs> I don't know. I, I felt like Plank is actually smarter than Johnny. Butter toast. Yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty close. So this is where we're actually going to begin. Where we left off, and you can actually tell us... The uh, the name of your your character here. Um, are you playing White Eye? Are you playing this Bugbear Butterbean? Bug bro. Or are you playing our Chariot, our lovely halfling that nobody seems to care much for? I'm playing neither of them because it was me, Malgrim, all along. Comes <laughs> 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 in, slams the, bear, the Bugbear, the, like just into the floor. The bugbear rips from his flesh and turns oh, into yeah. I was going to say, just down. pulls the zipper down and crawls out. Um, <laughs> so, no, I was just Malcolm all those I am uh, playing the bugbear, and uh, his name is Balthar. Balthar. Yes, That's right. Balthar Serenson. <laughs> Let's go with Butterbean, at least until you're intelligent again. <laughs> Dude, Butterbean <laughs> I've been using that phrase a lot lately. I, I fucking love it. Butterbean until he's different. intelligent. All right, guys. Three, um, he was my favorite. Were there any quirks? Did we have any quirks that we wanted to throw in tonight's game? It is entirely up to you to toss in quirks. Uh, while that is also being said, if you have not shared the information yet uh, for the Twitter, I'm going to need you guys to do that because the only way that we're going to be getting ourselves the luck rerolls is via the Twitter. Yas. So hop on it. I demand it. 
I demand it to be so. Butterbean the bugbear. I like it. Live and died by the cardboard. Rip. Literally rip. Horus was a, Horus may have been a cut out, but he wasn't cut out for this. <laughs> Crap sack. Yeah. You guys actually you uh, you do the quirks by checking out the table. Remember guys, if you are new here, do yourself a favor, check out the table and you guys can see uh, what you spend your reputation on. Everything is there. You could put in potions, uh, poisons, curses, banes, boons, uh, quirks, items, monsters, traps, like anything that you can really think of, we can make it so. Uh, it Bob, may take a little bit of finesse. I'm everyone in the tweet except for me. <laughs> I noticed that. Wait a minute, I totally tagged you. He definitely no, didn't. you definitely didn't. While, while quirks are going up. I uh, promise I'm, I tried. <laughs> I see promise I tried. It's not top fill material. <laughs> You're not. I'm going to go to the bathroom while, uh, while everyone decides the quirks. I'm going to do the down. same. Be right back. Good, 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 good. Guys, get your quirks ready. Get the retweets up. Thank you, Red and Michael Tish Tiscareno. That's a name. Michael Tiscareno. Also, uh, Bubs, I'm not sure how soon I'm going to have to leave, but you you have uh, access to my uh, Rangers uh, sheet, right? Um, Just in case you might need it. Are you going to leave your... Please leave your cam up. Yeah, I'm not. Why, why would I turn it on? Okay, because it'll fuck up all the cameras if you turn yeah, it off. Yeah, no, 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 I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna close it up. You don't have to worry about that. Great, thank you. Um, well, I mean, I'll just keep running him the same way that I've been running him, which is basically daft as all get out. Is Xander the mage? Xander is not the mage. He is, uh, he's actually the bugbear. He's playing the bugbear. His, he actually has class, race, he has abilities, he even has a familiar. So, not familiar. It's a, it's a ranger pet. Hey, 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 hey. It's a companion, okay? Not not like a Firefly companion, but enough. Enough. Yeah. So are you, are you actually taking off right now? No, not yet. Um, I'm going to be leaving in a little bit, though. I just, I'm just giving you a heads up that I will be leaving pretty soon. Does the bugbear have magic? 14. So we're at 14 retweets, guys. Um, he might have access to magic? I'm not sure yet. He yeah, should fair, have magic. One note, I do, one but I mean, no it's idea. not... It's it's not stuff that I like. It's super limited. So Rangers... Yeah. Rangers get extreme limitations. Extreme limitations. Not popping off spells like a wizard. I'm gonna pop off spells. He's getting slizzard. I hope not. All right, guys, we're at 14 of 20 retweets. We're at one of 10 follows and zero of two patrons. This is your opportunity. Your opportunity, yas. You guys like you got you like you you get it so easy too because. As long as the players retweet, that's five right away. That means that you guys only need to cover 15. Only need to cover 15 retweets. We get a luck reroll, Ghost. Yep. Anytime we reach our goal, anytime we reach our goal, you cats can choose which of the players get a luck reroll for the evening. They get to choose when, they get to choose where, but it's always a d20. To intercept either a critical fail, an attempt at a critical hit, a number of things. This is technically like the the fifth edition uh, inspiration dice, huh? It's similar. It's kind of similar. Kind of, but not really. It's actually a lot stronger. Though. Mm -hmm. Oh no, because this is this is a like a like this is a full reroll given your current modifier, so. No, it's more or less the same, yeah. It's basically saying, oh, you done fucked up now, son. Try again. Yeah. Because, uh, once. the Bardic Inspiration just adds to whatever your role is. I think that would, that's technically stronger. Yes. Because you can use Bardic Inspiration to just be like, ha! Huh, I'm only a couple points shy. Let's fix that. Yeah. All 
All right, we're going to check that tweet game right now. And then I'm going to look to see if we have... What happens when you reach the goal Metatron is rezzed? What? what? Megatron. Megatron. I was like, wait, what? I think you're I was crossing. sitting here going, Metatron? Why are we talking about the voice of God? No, it's Metatron. Like the guy that was playing ah. Meta on games? I am Metatron. Metatron. That makes way more sense. I you love Metaron. Right Living life outside the meta. They're all, what do you, what do you mean? What do you outside the meta? I'm like, half black, half Mexican, not good at sports. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Fucking stupid. That's how I do it. They're like, what do you excel on? Well, role play games, you know. <laughs> <laughs> what do you excel at? Eating tacos. Oh, man. No, oh, there's, so, there's so many really awful jokes to be made in that series of statements. And I'm already planning them. Yeah, well, you better write them down because you're not using them anytime soon. Aww. Yeah, I know. I ruin all the fun. Well, he can. Well, trust me, just is. he's he's gonna get uh, sass <clears throat> punishments. I don't know what the proper term for those are. Guys, from time to time, I like to call out some people that are new to the stream that uh, haven't had an opportunity to. Uh, follow yet or are just trying to find the right community for them. So thank you guys very much for following up to this point. Remember All the follows count in my direction in my attempts to get partnered I'm gonna try to get partnered again relatively soon. I just don't know when that's gonna happen So if you're new here if you uh, Like lurking that's totally a-okay, but I encourage you guys to actually come out and try to get to know me bub uh, the dungeon master the streamer and friend to most of the people here. Uh, so we've got Kenshi Dark at Twitch and Immigration Bear. What's up, Immigration Bear? I hate registering one, two, three. Uh, Fagwent and ChatDB. What's going on, guys? We've had a lot of awesome new people that have come out to stream recently, so thank you guys very much. Anthrodorable Boy. We have Alvaldi. Abdurian. Birdie Bassett. What's cracking, buddy? Capital Crusader. Capital, I've seen you for a while. Crapsack, Deathmend, Dinlara. I'm super happy to have a lot of you guys here. It's it's wonderful, actually. If you're lurking, continue to do so. I come here from Bloody Faster. You look similar. Yeah, I'm... I Yes. I'm... <laughs> yeah, they get confused all the time in public. It's true. We're basically the same person. Yeah, when you see him from behind, I can't tell the difference. Yeah, I mean that's that's most that it's mostly uh, mostly accurate. Um, yeah, I mean they're both thick. It's true. I I think I think I think my boobs might be bigger to be honest. <laughs> but yeah, I mean you really can't tell because Bloody really does a good makeup job on her beard. Yeah, yeah. Actually, her beard is uh, is vo. So good luck with that. Mm -hmm. Contouring classes: How to hide one's beard. What's a twitch? Shots fired. Oh, man. Give it the good work. I need to get some sleep now. Take it easy, two veps. Have a good one. Peace. Zimpact, what's going on, man? How you doing, man? Welcome to the stream. We got everybody back. Yep, Red just being quiet as per normal. What's up, Juicy? How's it, how's it doing, buddy? Yeah. Am, am oh, I what? there a reason for me to not be quiet? No, I mean, yeah. no. Question mark? Cool. All right. And this is where you cats step in and actually commence your role play. All right. Um, so I just finished what stomping on the glass and stuff. Oh no, I just tore. Uh, what's this? Yeah, you uh, tore cardboard in half, and we gave you a good pat. So as I uh, yeah, I just like I just look at the the pieces of the cardboard wall. <laughs> I just throw what it. was that? <laughs> what was? Yeah. What was what? Klaus. Cla what was that? Did, did I just... Did I just hear our party member 
rip one? <laughs> do, do, you, do you notice the absence of a certain cardboard cutout of a friend of ours? I can't see shit! You're in the way! <laughs> Can you see now? <laughs> oh I'm my like god, what did, what did you do? What did you do? He ripped it in half, I mean... I mean... We've known obviously. him for two days! It's As, been uh, a full two days. Yeah. As Jared starts yelling, I'm gonna like, I'm gonna like free demo and start like, like pawing his like face to like get him to stop. <laughs> uh, Xander, remember uh, push your talk, please, for for any echo issues. Yeah, my bad. Thank you. Uh, it is on push your talk. I think my sound is just really loud. Right, okay. Yeah. Um, as um, I'm gonna, like, as you're. Commencing to, to to paw at his face, uh, dragging your your bugbear like so, hairy sausages basically across his lips, repetitiously. Uh, the halfling immediately rounds the corner to see what's going on, and he's just kind of peering in on the situation. Very good. I like where this is going already. So, I mean, who? It's only up here. Who's leading? Which way are we going? I'm gonna um, turn to Horum and say, "Do we go north or are we going, uh, are we going west?" Heads we go left, tails we go left. Bubs, I, I would, I mean, even given my intelligence, I would know the scent of those who tracked me. Right. This whole place smells. It, it's like it's like being in Florida near the beach. Everywhere you go, smells like the ocean. Hey, okay. I know that life. So it'd be kind of overwhelming to try to track. Oh yeah, them. yeah. It's it's it is uh for lack of a better adjective, it's dank. It it just reeks of that uh, amphibious slash fish smell. Alrighty. I'm gonna come up to this door over here. Also, I don't know, I don't know why, but I can't see the map like at all. Because uh, he hasn't given you the ability to see light. Working on that right now. Make sure you change your character's name to what it actually is, because I know you're not playing Desmond. I hope you're not playing Desmond. <laughs> Yet again, another suit underneath the Malgrim suit. Ha! It was I, Desmond, the master of disguise. Twas me all along. <laughs> and he pulls it off from actually... another one. It's like I'm just kidding. I'm playing Edmund. <laughs> The actual like, Malgrim uh, costume is just smoke. Just like, are you done yet? Yeah, and I'm Jared's so going to just kind of like hang in the back and wave wide eye and chair it ahead and he's just like, I I've got my eyes on you guys. Wide eye that turns the corner and with with his his rat in hand, placing it back down on the ground, you hear the 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 squeaks and the patter as it runs off of the Rat scuttles away, and White Eye kind of leans in as you guys are looking at the doors. I, I, I always see them. They, they move. There, there are our stairs or a, or a hallway. Th this way. Th I, I know. I, I don't have any way to defend myself. Is, is there something that I can use so I can be useful? That, that's. That's that's I I I I I, I don't uh, there must if be something you be useful. You can Your teeth are ahead. sharp enough. I'm gonna I'm gonna take my bag off my shoulder. I'm gonna reach down into it and I'm gonna I'm gonna pull out the dildo bat. Oh I'm just gonna hold it out to him and be like, uh, this is a weapon. <laughs> it's a what, thing. Th this this looks. Unnatural. Where, where, where did you find this? Oh, I promise I, you, that looks perfectly natural. We I'm measured. uncertain where this came from, uh, but I've been uh, I've been carrying it with me, uh, <laughs> not out of choice, but that I just didn't want to lose a good weapon, and I can't find someone to sell it to, so I'm gonna this, offer it to you to use as a weapon. This looks like a a very large prick. You'd yes. be correct. I've met quite a few of those in my time. 
I, am, am I supposed to add insult to injury by making flopping noises after I swing? Yes. It gives you, it power. You may. It gives it power. You don't have to. Oh. Okay. Uh, mm. The floppier uh, the noise, the better. I, 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 I do better with smaller instruments. Um. Uh, can I pick up a, a decent shard of the, uh, the porcelain? I mean, you can. I'm gonna pick one up and hold it and say, I mean, you can use this. This is small. As you begin to hand it to him, uh, the moment that you kind of, like, release it, it just shatters in your hand uh, as it enters his. And as I say that, I'm gonna say, well, that limits your choices again. Does, does anyone not have uh, um, uh, 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 a, a dagger or, or uh, even a, a crowbar? A hand axe? Anything? I I have a simple dagger, though it's not much for for fighting with. Typically, it's for medical reasons. Hey, like, that'll uh, work. It, it, this is fine. This, this is fine. I I I need not anything as large and providing um, attention attention uh, as much as this. Um, you called it the dong bat. Yeah. You can have this back. Okay. Ow. And now I'm oh. gonna put it in my, in my, I don't know where I put it. On my back, I guess. I, I will need... I, uh, I, I, I need something... Yes, the, the dagger will suffice. It, uh, it's a mundane dagger. It's, uh... It's not the best quality of, of weapon I've seen, but it'll, it'll do, I think. Type of shift well, matters not. I'm just like sweeping up large amounts of like the porcelain on the floor, just trying to like put the statue back together and just getting sad because each piece just keeps breaking. <laughs> you know, just continually pat him on the head. It's okay. You should put your forehead back. Like, Right, should we put him out of his misery now? He's only I'd, going I'd, to hold us back. I After seeing him rip something in half that we even couldn't manage to break somehow, I think he'll be useful. To be fair, I wasn't trying. No, not you, the other idiot. Uh, uh. Sorry. <laughs> oh, the, the other, other idiot? Oh, got it. The, the right, one whose, whose brain isn't all there right now. Um, I was going to ask, is that thing still on my neck? No. No, it's not. Okay. Horum removed it. Didn't you use a dagger to get rid of it? Yeah, same, same dagger, dagger, actually. Okay. Hopefully it didn't have some kind of poison, because that would suck. All things agree. being said, now we've got the rat man armed. Let's go ahead and push ahead. Well, he said uh, that there were stairs over there, so we could go that way. Uh, push. And I'm gonna I thought that shove. Orm said we're going we'll go to the left. Jared. You're gonna you're gonna shove Jared. <laughs> yeah, when he says push, I'm gonna go push. <laughs> go push him. <laughs> okay, uh, give me a CMB versus a CMD. Jared, what's your CMD? I snapped the child's neck. Uh, currently twenty-four. I'm really hoping you're dead funny on this. Oh my god. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Kachonk. Alright, uh, Jared, when you say push, you hear a push as the bugbear immediately turns, thudding your direction, not knowing what to do, brings up both of his arms together, and with like shit eating grin, he gives you the shove heard round the world. As you immediately, basically, bumper car off the wall, directly down, prone to the ground. And he seems very, very smitten with his action. Like string of drool hanging from his bottom lip. Uh, you just got body fool! <laughs> I vote we call him brain damage. <laughs> I just, I just kind of like sit there like hunched over, like with like my hands, uh, and like kind of like kneeling down. Oh, uh, push. <laughs> This is a good time. My like, my laugh can be in character and out of character at the same time. 
<laughs> I'm uh, <laughs> I'm gonna say to uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna say to Balthar in Goblin, uh, good job. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't. I don't understand what that was, but my mother was a saint. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. yeah I'm gonna go walk Jared's over gonna to pick up like, the turtle. Kind of slowly lumber to his feet. Good boy. Good. Yeah. Good. Maybe sometime in the future, I'll actually run a uh, a game where everyone plays geriatrics. And uh, <laughs> in that situation. If they fall down. I need my life alert! You, you need a fortitude save where you shatter your hip and you're stuck forever. <laughs> Go on without no, you, me. You shatter your hip and you have to pay for a wheelchair. My oh, ARP was down. running out anyway. <laughs> Instead of being God afflicted with, like, ability drain or something like that, it's just osteoporosis. <laughs> oh, man. That hits a little too you close to, to home for some people. You go to swim your sword and your arthritis kicks uh, Or fucking RA, yeah. <laughs> God <laughs> damn it. <laughs> oh! <laughs> as he's uh, as Jared's trying to clean himself up, uh, Balthor will like pat him as well. Just try to like make sure he's like he's all is he, he's as clean as possible. We're we're good. We're we're good. We're good. So we're so good. the the question still stands: north, west, east. Go west. Plus. Okay, we got one for west. We got two for west. Can Plus. I get can I get more? I I I, I uh, think it, it, my my friends have been telling me that this way is the safest way down without being seen. But they said that they they all know that 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 you're here. Well, that's good. We're well, really being sneaky. You, we you've, are. You've been you've been rather sneaky you've been rather boisterous. Your entrance we is. Never were ones for the element of surprise anymore. Allowed. Why surprise them when you can just kill them instead? Mm-hmm. That's always when worked in, before. When in doubt, kill everything. All right. Well, although going going through the front door, I'm going to point to the north door. Maybe going through the front door is not the best idea. So I would I'd limit it to west or east. East being apparently the quietest and safest, probably the least guarded. Yeah, and Jared's just going to go ahead and move on. God damn. Um, as they start walking away, I'm gonna, I'll, like, I'm not gonna, like, yank them, but, like, I, I, I pat, like, Klaus's shoulder, and I start making, like, a drawing motion with the, like, with my hands. You see me start doing this. Uh, uh, what, what, what are you, what, what are you suggesting here? <laughs> He's trying to bisect mm. string cheese, mm. apparently. <laughs> it's uh, Twizzler's pull and peel. Fruit roll up. Fruit by the foot. He's unboxing a new TV and pulling off the electrical tape. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Been there. He seems to be motioning to you uh, something. Uh, Where's your maybe cardboard a, friend? Maybe a banana, a really large banana peel. Mm -hmm. You can't seem um, to uh, I, to I'm tell ask yet. Him in, in Goblin, do, can you not speak? What's what seems to be the matter? Uh, 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 I I don't have a bow for you are you did you find a bow are you looking for a bow ah jared can help there because he was going ahead and carrying the bow and arrows that orist was carrying you know for when he finally decided not to be you know in half an owl bear mm -hmm. yeah. so he's gonna be like bow catch <laughs> just fling the bow in just hit the arrows back. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> now look what you did. <laughs> You're you made him cry. sad. Um, he strikes his arm up in the air to try to try to capture the bow, but as the the cord catches the underside of his hand, it seems to sling around and like flap him inside of the head, <laughs> where he seems to curl up one. I look. <laughs> um, can I use a perception check on this to see if this is uh this has my scent on it? 
Uh, yeah, sure, go for it. I'm waiting. Ooh. I'm, uh, Ooh. I'm waiting. 18. Okay. Um, you guys see him pull the, the, the bow off of his hand, and he seems to kind of double hand and place the, the shaft of the bow itself straight across the, the front end of his snout. And as he's, like, sniffing it, there's this dragging, like, loud drag. <laughs> it is not your yeah. bow. I, I throw it to the floor. Mm. Mm. Oh, okay. I'm gonna go walk up and pick it up. I'm gonna be like, well, you didn't want this one. Okay, yeah, on that note, Jared's oh, gonna continue on. Uh, can I try to track my own scent to see if my if I can find it? Sure, give me a uh, perception. 21. 21. Uh, you immediately begin getting into this like prowl-like stance where you kind of crouch low, lowering your center of gravity, and you guys can see that his his upper lip and nose is moving. It's beginning to furrow like that of a bear as he begins sniffing around. Uh, inherently, he's kind of like spinning in a circle at first, just gathering his own scent. Uh, and as this happens, he slowly makes his way back into his cell, and that's when your trail goes cold. <laughs> What's that? Timmy stuck in the well? <laughs> I lean in close to Cosmo. Keep my fucking bow. <laughs> <laughs> Just pull him by the shirt. I swear to God, I will murder you. I'm all your ruining my screen time, kid. Where's my fucking bow at? <laughs> uh, um, but yeah, I'll, uh, I'll look back over to Cosmo. Bow. And like I point to myself when I say it. You, you, you know you're not a bow, right? <laughs> you're you're a bugbear. Bugbear. Hey, if he wants to identify as a bow, that's his issue. Don't Just don't expect him. me to draw him. <laughs> draw me like one of your bugbears. Uh. All right. Since, well, since I can't find it, I'll just I'll. Uh, my ears will kind of droop, and I'll just kind of go. Mm -hmm. Whoa. <laughs> We're gonna have to do something about that at some point. I feel like a very like, sad like... child's bow. At some point, yes, we will. For now, I don't know how to fix. Cross, cross that bridge when we come to it. <laughs> Bandio like 43 and Morbid 67, thank you guys so much for those follows. I'm sorry I missed those, but I just checked my dashboard. And it has gone a flitter. I don't know. Horum, every so often I got a feeling like we should leave these guys behind. What do you think? You can. You know, I get that feeling about the majority of you. Because <laughs> sometimes I'm not certain that... Uh, that my god is very happy with me traveling with you guys. You make some moral moral discrepancies at times. You're but, telling uh, me? Your god's watching me too, man. Yeah, I know. But you're so also being watched by the scene other. Sakata. <clears throat> yes. You have pushed as much as you can to go into the left-hand side. Horum, uh, Jared, you guys have moved over to the cloth, the green cloth, to uh, to enter further, correct? Correct. Correct. Okay. If there's a trap, he was there first. <laughs> <laughs> nice call. That bus, it looks so good from beneath. <laughs> it's okay. All right. Uh, as long as it's not a mimic. <laughs> Do you guys charge in immediately, knowing full well that there is not a traditional door here? Knowing us, probably. Yeah, Jerry's just going to go ahead and push his way on through, because, you know, he got tired of the hemming and the hawing. The hemming and the hawing. Sounds good. Okay. Which way are we going? That's not right. Which way are we going? That's not right. Jerry's just like, uh, walk on through. <laughs> All right. 
Um, as you enter into the room, let me go ahead and pull away the dynamic lighting if there's anything here blocking it. There is. It's a wall. I actually can't grab it. What the fuck? Everything is ruined forever! We can also not pass uh, through this Do you this want wall. to, as a DM, move the tokens? You should be able to go ahead and just move us in mass, I believe. In that Let us out! I actually can't... Wow, I think that the dynamic lighting layer broke. Wait a minute. I can grab that line. Control well, Z. Something's happened. I'm seeing things. Sort of. Yeah, I can't grab that line for whatever reason. Um, sure, I'll move you guys in. Oh yeah. Oh boy. It's purple. That's not a good sign. Poison usually means purple. Oh, come on now. Okay, all right. Behind a ratty tapestry is a room faintly lit by purplish patches of phosphorescence on the floor. A midden heap sits in the center of the room, and the walls have primitive stick figure carvings of bipeds with spears on them. Four slight depressions in the floor holds an inch or two of water. Is there some kind of secret to this room? What do you think's in the water? Jared's not about to find out. He sees stairs. He's learned enough about water today to know he, he can't touch it. Do you have anybody with knowledge nature? Xander might. I don't know shit about plants. Well, yeah, I, I just know about nobility and religion. That's me. I'm a dungeoner. Uh, yeah, we did have a supernatural to, uh, to sense if this is dangerous. No, but you could use scent. That's that's well, that's what well scent uses my perception check. It, it just yeah. enhances. Yeah. Go for so, it. It's this is it's either a scent or knowledge nature to determine this. Twenty nine. As you begin to lean down into this phosphorescent patch, um, the moment that you kind of lean into it, as you get close enough, while it is illuminating the room with this very strange purplish glow. You immediately know, once you're inches away from it, this is... This is shit. This is feces. This is dookie. Uh, it's like the moment like I, I get close enough to realize it, I'll like, I'll reel back to him, <clears throat> like holding my nose. <sighs> <sighs> Obviously it doesn't smell good. Start, I'll start shaking, the, like yeah, I'll start like like trying to shake the scent off. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Whoa. Immediately begins attempting to shake the scent away. I'm gonna slowly move my hand over my face and just hold my nose and say, "Well, if he doesn't like it." Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna say it's not good for us. We should um, probably move through. I'll yeah. uh, I'll walk past it though, because I mean I I at least know it's not deadly. It just smells bad if I get too close to it. Well, one has to wonder what has phosphorus and shit. Mm. I mean, one doesn't have to wonder. I <laughs> eat crystals and crab like. Could just wait and figure out what they are. I want okay. to look into one of these little pools of water and see if it's just more phosphorescent uh, piles of X substance. See, so you're basically trying to look into the, the this uh, this water itself. Um, yeah. Your best guess is, is that it's uh, some sort of uh, addition to the excrement. It may be the equivalent of like urine from uh, cloaca. Um, but it seems to be puddling in these depressions in the floor. We have managed to find their latrine. Yeah, Something this place is pretty that, gross. Yeah. And this, this mass that's in the center of the room, is it like... Is it just a heap? Yeah, it's it's a vast pile. An enormous 
dung heap from these Kuatoan. Mm. Yeah, um... Do you guys Baldar's think they might have hidden something like, under this heap of whatever this is? That's one big pile of shit. <laughs> Klaus, want, want to blast it? See what happens? Well, uh... I'm going to step away from it. <laughs> Are you really asking me to cast magic on a pile of shit? From it. I mean, I'm asking if you wanna. You don't have to do it. Do you think I should? Do you think you should? Gonna leave you behind, guys! <laughs> I'm gonna push Good Jared luck. away, because Balthar can't stand the smell of being in here right now. I, I think we should maybe just move on. Uh, I don't. I don't think they would hide anything of value in their own <laughs> See, that's the secret. They don't think you'll check it. You guys should go in there and check with your hands, obviously. That's my Actually, secret. Face the, first. Whole dungeons <laughs> made the whole dungeons. <laughs> the whole dungeons. Okay. So, oh, Jared's not going to be in the way. He's, he's kind of just like moving right along himself. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll exit the room. Okay. So you wish to exit the room. Are you going up the steps? Where are you going exactly? Uh, that's the only thing I can see is up the steps. Um, I guess back the way I came. Unless there's another pathway that I can see. Not jumping in the pool, I'll say that much. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not jumping in the pool. There's so many fucking maps, man. Okay, um, so you want to go back the way you came. Alright, then I will move your character the way that you came. Wait, back the way we came? That's what he said. Okay. He passes by everyone. He wants to go back the way to the game. Uh, Wide Eye also says, "Nothing good comes from that direction, as I I, I have experienced. Uh, this is where the, the I see the guards go." And Chariot also steps forward. Yes, I would like to spill some blood on this day. Let's ascend. Go! Now, Wide Eye steps in. Um, no. I. I think I'm we must move say, deftly. Quiet. Look, we. Quiet isn't something we do. You can. You can chill down here as long as you don't run away. But, uh. We'll, we'll, we'll be back. So you just There's intend. There's no point in standing still. We're not going back. Push forward. But who's to okay, say that I've... you're not actually going backward now? I haven't been there before. It's forward to me. Well, why not listen to me as I hear the rats of Baham Tugan? They speak to me. I have expressed this. Turn Jared, you know he's right. All right. I offered to go ahead and let him be the scout. He didn't choose to be the scout. Do we want to go ahead and follow the Ratman? We you also, the Ratman. you also told me to not have a weapon that I should just deal with it at the same time. What kind of sane-minded individual would let He's a scout not, not. move forward without any He's, kind of way to defend myself? Trust me, if you're gonna try to find any rationale or logic to Jared's uh, uh, hold thinking on patterns, here. you're talking about sane individuals. You you did bite off our friend's finger. Did you not? Have you ever gone without food? Well, not for a long period of time, no, but I'm just pointing out that a dagger seems about as useful as your teeth at this point. To be viciously frank, he could have put his prick in between those bars, and I probably would have bit it off as well. It has nothing to do with the fact that it was from a body, but something to eat. Now, I'm all about... Removing the problem at its source, but I would like to think that you're not going to the source. Now, I right. do want to trust you, but at the same time, I I believe that this is counterintuitive to the issue. All I don't right. think it's necessary so, to just spill blood at every angle. Okay. Cherich so just, just kind of sitting there tapping, tapping his toes. This guy could just go on and on. I believe that we should go up there and turn them to cinders. Crisp! Allow me, the exquisite chariot, magician extraordinaire, to burn their bodies to nothing. You can watch. It's fine. It's fine. I understand. I always 
it was Voyeur. Well, um, I mean, I mean, you guys, you guys Jared, handle this. Are you, are you gonna uh, open I'm, the door? I'm gonna go see what that bugbear is up to, because I don't really want him traveling alone here. That's fine. Have have fun. Don't don't get pushed. Um, I was gonna say I actually <laughs> don't have any lighting, um, but I don't know if that's because they're in the other room or not. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, if they were having that conversation, I would probably head upward north from where the cells were, because I mean, it wouldn't make sense for me to just kind of stay. Uh, but I will stealth because I don't want to just run into anything. Well, he's scared, so I guess he would he would still be stealth. To try to hide. Um. Then let's go ahead and give you. I think it's the uh, the light source. So for you, it's. Times Do you have three. dark vision? Yeah, yeah, I have dark vision. He thing. would. Okay. I mean, I, I guess he would have to, as it's his race. Mm. How Jared's about that? Go ahead and... Yeah, I can see. Um, it's a quarter roll of self check. Um, is is it cool to still roll a check for what? For stealth, because I, like I said, I was gonna head north from the cells while they were having that conversation. Yeah. That's pretty good. Um, why don't you show me where you're attempting to hide? Uh, going upward from this way. Uh, it'd probably be kind of like weaving in and out of the cells. Just to, so if anything does come by, I can at least hide in one of like, the little corners. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's, okay. that's his, you know, best he's going to be able to do. Like kind of like cartoon status where he, he like he walks like two steps and then he shifts in and then he like walks two steps again and then shifts sure. back. Sure, 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 sure. Okay. Um, now you said over here, Horum, you wanted to go through, correct? Yep. Uh, I was going to follow, but I couldn't pass through that wall. Um, go ahead. Would I see him around the corner? Yes, you would. In fact. Okay, then I'd, I'd likely try and follow. I'm not going to make a stealth check, because, I mean, it'd probably just get worse if I tried. <laughs> um, peering over the corner, would I be able to see anything? I just I just don't have the lighting to kind of round the corner immediately. As you, um, you should, uh, well, I mean, you're going to have to, you're going to have to look, like, that's part of yeah. the, that's part of the issue. Um, as you begin, you know, rounding that corner, you see... That the uh, the paladin has also rounded with you. Um, I'm gonna wait a moment and go back to these guys here. Uh, Chariot and White Eye is still speaking to you. Um, thoughts, Sakata, Jared, Klaus. Yeah, Jared's gonna look at Sakata and did they really just? Walk yes. The fuck off? Yes. Yes, they did. Just. Yes. Do you still want to go tor onwards towards our death? <sighs> you know, I'd be perfectly fine at this point to go ahead and leave the idiot alone. But I happen to like the bugbear. Uh, Bub, can I just hop over the railing and then go back into the original room? You can. I'll go ahead and pull you. Yeah, we'll and and Jared's going to just kind of be shaking his head and do much the same, and you know, kind of look at class. See, just nobody can go ahead and follow follow direction. No, everybody's got to go their own way. You know, I don't think we. <clears throat> if they believe it's best to go the other way, then. We might as well just stick with them. Even if it ends up being the worst decision, at least we'll be together. Right, right. Because, you know, we should definitely go ahead and go the way that the guys in the cells say, right? Okay, Jared, White Eyes, lead on. Okay, um, I'm going to go ahead and drag Klaus across. Very good. Um, as you guys begin making your way over, you see that everybody seems to be rounding the corner and going in the direction of the steps. Um, I'm going to drag these characters and begin moving them that way. Uh, Chariot seems to naturally stride forward with almost like, you know, like he's he's got his chest stuck out. And you can see here 
uh, that White Eye seems to be a bit more deft. Like he's leaning into the walls. Um, he's trying to make himself less known. He seems to be tiptoeing over this like cracked porcelain. Um, and he's still driving himself forward. So when you guys round the corner up here, you will see that your allies are basically stuck waiting. Like they're they're kind of waiting for any kind of direction or goal at the very end of this hallway. What seems to be the holdup? Nothing. Uh, yeah, as they start coming back up, I'll uh, I'll be making my way down. I just don't know if uh, Horm's gonna make contact with me or if I'm just gonna keep going. I'm, well, I'm, unless you try and turn and tell me to be quiet or anything, I'm just gonna kind of follow you. I'm not stealthy, so I'm not gonna try and be stealthy. I'm just gonna be straight up like full full metal armor climbing down these stairs. All right. Um, I guess I'll head downstairs, or is that up? Yeah, downstairs. Okay, um, I'm going to go ahead and copy all of you goons. Let's move you. I'm going to move you guys back into some kind of a uh, marching order. It doesn't make uh, any kind of sense right now. It won't matter, but you guys can realign yourselves as you get to the bottom. Uh, as it begins to descend downward into low Bamatugan. Okay. All right. You've decided to take point here, my friend. You've descended downward, and it seems to be moving. Uh, as it descends downward, it makes a hard left, and the scent of water seems to uh, seems to be quite quite potent down here. What do you do? Um. Can I tell if it's fresh or salt water? Uh, it seems to... It's it's definitely not salt water, and you can't immediately tell if it's fresh. Okay. Um, I'll still be, like, in, like, prowl mode, uh, trying to make my way to the water, then, to see um, if it opens up. Wait a minute. Hold on. Or to, I guess, see Bam. if it's a way out. There we go. You guys should be able to see... There you go. How about that? Everything, by the way. Yeah, uh, that's fine. Am I still making the same? Uh, am I still using the same stealth roll? Or <coughs> thank you. Wooden dog. <gasps> My clone. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I'm gonna have to have some talks with some people, but that's fine. Uh, as you begin moving here into this open area, there is a lighting that seems to be coming from the end of the hallway. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and give you guys some information here. So, care, care, as you guys begin to move in. Okay. Um, so, I mean, as, as I get to, like, within the 5, 10 feet of the water, I'll uh, sure give it another smell. Does it have any uh, odors I'd recognize? Let me explain this to you. Um... Here. The passageway leading to this room slopes down slightly, and the omnipresent puddles eventually go to the point where you are at least knee-deep in murky water. The room is lit by a floating brazier in the northwest corner, seemingly floating near the center, containing an ob obviously magical flame. This has all manner of torture implements, or shelves, scalpels, thumb screws, a large jar of salt, and a well-oiled stretching rack. Manacles hang from the ceiling nearest the northern wall. A series of bodies dress this room. Floating in all angles, there are multiple bits of bone and flesh of human and humanoid creatures. Everything about this cozy? smells foul, and unhealthy. Not it. Nope. 
Uh, you guys have to go the whole way. <clears throat> Kind of leaning, well, looking like to the walls, but I see that there's a way to like not touch the water or anything like there that. Is there is not. There's like... there's not a way to not touch the water. Um, as you uh, move down, you can hear from the rear side. Um, it seems like White Eyes says, My rats pass through here. They say, they say that you must tread carefully. Would you care to go ahead? So you could scout it out? I I can, yes. I'm gonna let him through. That, that's what I... Okay. <laughs> Just become one with the wolf, that's fine. He's all just gotta phase through real quick. Just... Boom. Kitty pride that shit. Um, as he tries to go, like, I'll, I'll like, kind of pull his... Mm. Mm. No, 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 it's, it's fine, it's fine, just let me, let, let me go, I will be quick, I will be deft. I will be like a leaf on the wind. Oh. He begins to wade into the knee-high puddle. The moment that he steps into the earliest parts of the room, that knee-high shifts to mid-hip. Oh. Uh, it seems to be a bit of a drop. Um, it's easily, I mean, White Eye isn't exactly a tiny individual, so you're looking at at least three and a half feet tall of water. Chariot immediately says, This will not settle! I demand shoulder! Now! I cannot swim this! Uh, I'll look at Jared. Jared, he's your friend. Pick him up. Uh, you let him out. Bitch, I knew they would go ahead and come back and bite me in the ass. Yeah, and Jared will... You know, being the brick shit house that he is, just kind of lean over clouds, you know, grab him by the robes and lift him up and just like shoulder him. Um, he continues to shift his way across the room. As he passes by the brazier, uh, you see body parts shifting. He looks back, and as he looks back to you, he kind of leans his head back. There are a vast number of bodies in here. That's not good. Slowly Stop wading his way head across. Head. He makes his way to the um, opposite side, where he takes a step up, and then he he kind of like leans downward, and then as he leans back to the group, I think it's fine, but we will have trouble ahead. I'll uh, I'll try to jump across. Like I I, I don't want to touch <laughs> much water. So five, I, 10, I'm 20, yeah. 25, 30 feet. So I'll use the, I guess, the first 10 feet for the running start. Is that correct? Uh, yes. Cannonball! Yeah. Heard it's just fun in the green goo in the sun. That's acrobatics, correct? Yes. Twenty-five. All right. Taking the opportunity for your character to not touch the water, you feel like you can cover this ground relatively quickly. So as you lumber your way backwards, attempting to make your way across with, with a momentous leap, the moment that your feet leave the puddles themselves, something erupts from the water. With a momentous splash, a creature erupts. And he catches your character by the side, pulling you down to the depths, the, the middle part, uh, the open column here near the brazier. This nasty, nasty creature catches you mid-flight. And I'm going to tell you what you're looking at here. What it, you're looking it ain't at. Pretty. It ain't pretty. That is right. That is right, friends. You are staring at... Oh, man. Oh, man. Um... It is an amalgamation of parts. That's all you get from it. A humanoid creature with bits of spike and ivory from its body, an amalgamation of parts. I need you to make a will save immediately. All of this or him? Just him. Okay. Thank God it was him. Uh, 
I think our paladin didn't get grabbed because God forbid he had a will save. 14. 14! Don't tell me it's term. Don't tell me it's term. Don't tell me it's term. You have failed your save, sir. You are paralyzed with fear for four rounds. You find it unnaturally incapable of yourself to even defend. You are just frozen with fear. Let me get an initiative, please. I dig this music. I like it more than I like Elf Song. Man, you just bitch. Dude, like I said in the stream, after 600 hours, you get really tired of it. Uh, you pretend I like did. you were there for 600 I hours. Yeah. <laughs> I was exaggerating, but I've heard it at least over 100. That's probably true. That's probably true. Uh, I want to just make sure I got my modifiers right. Wow, the know. frozen with fear like... and then able to act. That's uh Okay. Um so looking at those initiative tables, Klaus, what'd you get? Uh eight. Eight? Horum, what'd you get? Eighteen. Eighteen. That's much better. Orist is not in the game. Eight. Ooh, I like that. If it doesn't fit, just 18. make it. Slam it in there. Cicada, what'd you get? Seventeen. Seventeen. And Jared, what'd you get? Seven. 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 Very good. So now I'm going to be adding our new character, Balfar. And Balfar, what'd you get? Five. Nice. In descending order. Uh, Horum, you're up first in initiative. Okay. Um, I saw him get dragged under, correct? He didn't get... No, his character is physically too tall to get dragged under. Uh, this water is chest high from the, their their current angle. Okay. Then I... Whatever uh, this creature is, it was tall in its previous life. It does not look natural now. I gotta get in there. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to the, the water's edge and I'm gonna try and wait to to get beside it so that I can hit it. Okay. This I water seems almost unnaturally thick. The murkiness amidst the years of this sitting here, wading through uh, the contamination of human flesh and various other organisms uh, that have been here have made this almost like a, a goulash, if you will. Uh, the moment that you hit the water, you begin to slug through this. This is not an easy movement thing. Uh, so, so, it's going to be the duration of your round to move it there, draw your weapon. Um, moving through water is, is difficult for you. Yeah, Incredibly diff difficult. Okay. Cicada. Oh, by the way, uh, Horum, are you immune to fear effects? Yes, I am immune to fear. Okay, then you're good. Cicada, what you got for me? Also, anyone within 10 feet of me gets a plus 4 to fear checks. But, but, uh, Balthar was not at the time it mattered, so it doesn't matter yet. Red, I think you're muted. He's gonna move up here. God. Okay. I hate how heavy this mic is sometimes. Uh, I was gonna move, and would I be able to attack him diagonally, or is there just no room? Uh, there's not enough room. <laughs> Um, gotcha, gotcha. It's, it's not that you won't have enough room. It's just that your character will have to move and then move again to get into range. Uh, right, this right. starts becoming like us, basically a slug. Uh, the moment that you start moving into the water, uh, so yeah, it's it's rough, man. This is this is a really rough situation. Disgusting. I'm up okay. This water, and I don't even have any souls. There are two of you left still. Interesting. Uh, my turn, Red. I need you to make a will save, please. Okay, and, uh, and yeah, I got a plus four from you. Yes. Correct. If it's a fear. And don't forget to add your bravery. Yep. Hold on. So right now I'm paralyzed with fear, right? Like I can't move at all. Oh yeah, it's uh. Four rounds. Woo! Very good, very good. That was actually that makes the difference here in success for you. So that's that's pertinent to your guys' success here. Um, my turn. My turn, my turn, my turn. Six more of them rise from the water and you all shit your pants and die. No, God. 
That would be awful. Absolutely I have to take awful. My brown pants. Okay. Uh, seeing has how he immediately targeted the bugbear that came into the room. Um. Great. He's gonna take an attack. This creature is gonna take an attack on you. It is not exceptional. It's it's not great. You guys roll way better. What is your AC, Mr. Bugbear? Uh, it's uh, flat-footed. Well, yeah, flat-footed. So yes. Well. Okay. And after he is going to bite into you, he's going to take a slam attack. This is the much more ferocious attack. That one's going to hit as well. So the bite... Take six points of damage from the bite and the slam attack. Minimum damage, take 11 from the slam. As he comes down, uh, I need you to make a reflex and then I need you to um, immediately make a fortitude save. Um, I can't make reflex uh, saves from uh, immobile. Okay, um, then your character is also prone. So he's basically engaged uh, almost over the top of you, uh, holding you near and under the water. Uh, this would probably drive... Oh, shit, that's right. Your character is absolutely uh, paralyzed with fear. Um, that's great. Give me a fortitude save, please. 25. Very good, very good. Uh, okay, Klaus. You, you hear right. this... Pretty horrifying, like gnawing noise. This this un like uh, almost unaudible growl that's going on in the opposite room. Mm. Um, I'm gonna move up to see what's going on because Jesus. It's, oh, that's fine. So it should be thirty. Pretty sure. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Give me perception as you enter the room. I can do that. It looks so technology y. <laughs> 22. Very good. Uh, as you enter into the room, the audible noises of the zombie, this unnatural mummy like creature, seems to be over the top as it's tearing into the flesh of your bugbear ally. Your friends have immediately stepped into the room. And there is just this sense, this paramount sense of fear that falls over you. I need you to make a will save, please. You get plus four okay. to your will. Not a great roll. It's actually meeting the DC. So even or odd in your favor. Uh, we're going to go with odd. Even. Ha! You were paralyzed for four rounds with fear, sir. Four rounds. Let's hope your allies are able to do something about this. Jared! Well, seeing as the combat seems to be afoot, yeah, me and uh, Jared will... Not me, Jared and Jared will move on up. So let's see. I'm going to let you control his character then, okay? Sweet, seeing as he is on my shoulder. I'm the king of the world! I'm going to put him uh, to front. There, you should have access to it. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Um, you can opt in to press by your ally, but your ally is frozen in fear. You would physically have to push his body downward or behind you, uh, which will in turn push him down. Under most circumstances, he would be able to allow you to pass by, but he can't this way. Uh, yeah, actually, I'm just going to go ahead and... Let's see here. 
Yeah, he's going to go ahead and... I'm assuming that he does notice that Klaus is just like... Ugh! Frozen in fear, right? Um, you can see the back of him. It's not like there, there's any audible noise or anything. It's just like he's just kind of stuck there. Well, being Jared, being a fighter, and being that there's a fight ahead, yeah, he's just going to go ahead and, like, push Klaus off to the side and step on by. Okay, um, it's CMD versus CMD. Uh, Klaus, you're denied your dexterity in this uh, particular fight. Actually, it's you have no dex, you have no strength. You are quite literally a mannequin. So what is... You get base attack bonus. What is your bab with it? It doesn't matter. He's just going to push you over. All right. All right. Yeah, just um, kind of like prop him against the wall and step on by. All right. And so your character is physically against the wall at this point, kind of uh, like belly uh, across the other wall. Uh, so, yeah, perfect. Jared, at the moment that you step in after your action, you've had to take a move and then a slight physical action. I'll even give you an additional move. But as you move in, I need you to give me a will save as you begin to enter the room. Yeah, and that's perfectly fine. And Clash, you want to just go ahead and move your token back a step? Yeah, I can do that. Yeah, that way we don't lose you. No, just move into the wall. Yeah, but I'll do that. I'm in the wall. It's all good. <laughs> you are in the it. wall. You are part of the wall. All right, and let's see. So you said a will save? Yes. All right, and I have a plus two in spear effects, and am I close enough to pour them to... Yeah, am I close enough to Horm to go ahead and get some benefits? Yeah. Yes. All right, and that's an additional four. Correct. Thanks. Okay, so that's plus eight, which I'm gonna need. Twenty-six. Nice. Yeah. Very good. Very good. You were able to uh, smash the will save. This. And now it's Chariot's turn to try and. Um. Yes, uh, the issue here is that, yeah, that he's got to make a save. All right, so let's see. He is going to be a d20 plus. I, I have a question. I have an answer, hopefully. What you got for me? Uh, standing in this water, will it cause me to only be able to take one melee strike, or would it not affect it? As long as you don't move, you can take full melee attack action. Oh, okay. And Jared's hey. gonna be like, it's got What's a very good on? chance, actually. Yeah, he's able to pass it. Uh, Balfar, this is that was a full round for you. So at the end of this round, will be two rounds for you, frozen in fear. Uh, Horum, you're up. I'm, I'm gonna try and poke it a couple times. Okay, go for it. I just gotta make sure. Like, are you gonna just gently poke it? Oh no, I'm gonna poke it pretty hard. You can tell that this is some kind of undead amalgamation. The flesh and bones that lie tattered. That's that that'll do pig. That'll do pig. Alright. So does a fourteen hit? Uh does a fourteen hit? Uh fourteen will not hit. Oh, sorry, I thought that was damage. No that no, that's not damage. Damage is higher. No, it's it's even higher than a D twenty. Go for it. Give me some damage on your twenty four. Okay. He's all five D one hundred. Not quite. Oh wow. Uh twenty nine damage. Damn. Nice hit, nice hit. That's a lot. That is a oh, lot. God. That'll do, pig. That'll, That'll do, pig. Do. Cicada! Yo, it's, if my mic could stop fucking falling down. Jesus Christ. It is... You're just a stronger arm. I have a strong arm. It's just the fucking Yeti weighs 20 pounds. The Yeti's a very heavy you microphone. You need a stronger arm. Take uh, my strong hand! Above, would it be possible to just do this if Horm lets me pass? Um, he's engaged in melee combat, so not really. Like, under normal circumstances... Okay, so I want to get to him. I gotta, wait, hold on. So, uh, you can hit him. You you can currently oh, hit him. Okay. Cool. Uh, can I pull an action for Vital Strike? Um, yeah, I don't see why not. Cool. So I will do just that. Uh, 
Oh, so close. It was a 29. Yes, that hit. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> oh, so yeah. close. Oh, no. Oh, uh, so close. Here's, here's damage without vital strike. Uh, vital strike is times what it does. All right. That's uh, more uh, wait, damage. And I also have to do this. Hold on. Cool. Three damage back to me. Perfect. Okay. Um, let's see. You guys actually did the same amount of damage. So, Spot on. I'm going to leave it to an even or odd here. Even and odd. Odd it is. Horum. It's a drum. Is that your AC? Uh, I believe my AC is 24. Okay. Then I believe I hit you. 23. Okay. So you. Take 17 points of damage. I'll need you to give me a reflex, followed by a fortitude save. Okay. As the creature turns to you immediately, you see it turn and focus on you as it lets out this tumultuous, mummified zombie moan. Reflex, you are able to stay on your feet as he slams you. It kind of pushes your your boot against the uh, almost like flesh-soddled stone. And as this happens, um, you're able to stabilize as opposed to slipping. Lucky for you. And in the situation, you're able to, to also make your fortitude save, so you avoid mummy rot. Excellent. Uh, well, I can't get mummy rot anyways. And he is going to attempt a bite on your face. Does not do it. Correct. Klaus, you're frozen. Jared, you're up. Oh, right. Now, I'm assuming that since Sakata is in combat, I'm not going to be able to pass him by. Yeah, he's not going to um, go ahead. That's, and... that's, that's accurate. You're not going to... I mean, you could technically... Uh, you can try... But it's going to require some finesse on your part. You're going to need to be able to acrobatics over this monster. Uh, over this monster is in over Sakata? Yes. yes. You would need to be able to acrobatics over him. Like your attempt here, it would be easier for you to try to land here as it would be for you to try to land here. Oh, no. Yeah. I, I, I'm kind of figuring that out, but I've also got... Um, an evil dwarf and wizard on my shoulders. So I'm just going to be like, ATST time, go! And just like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> well, I mean, go for it. Let's uh, let's see what you got. Uh, no, nah, I'm just going to hold action. I mean, there's really nothing. Sure, I, I got you. I, I know my acrobatics. I don't want to dump this evil dwarf in the water. So Balfar, that's the end of the round. Ahead. Yeah, Jared's just That's... gonna go ahead and hold him up and be like, "Do something!" All right, let's see what Jared can do. Kill it let's with what, fire! Let's see what our what our boy can do here. I have one Jared. more round after this, bro. Right? Yeah, Jared is gonna take his action. This is round three that we're currently in. Okay, cool. Nice. Um, we're going to go... Perfect. Uh, as he seems to look in, nodding at you allowing him, you're basically holding him in place, allowing him to make an attack. The moment that you hold him up, he says, How to kill a zombie? Well, with fire. So I say, let's do this! And you see both of his hands kind of come together like he's doing some traditional anime-like pose uh, where he's going to unleash some burning fire. Burning fire. It's uh, burning hands, if you will. Yep, let's see here. This is one of his go-to spells. So, uh, unfortunately, this creature is not going to get a save. Uh, let's see. That's going to be... 
I'm gonna need a reflex from Cicada, a reflex from Horum, and a reflex. Oh, never mind. You just have to take it as well. <laughs> yeah, take it like the bitch you are. All right. Well, actually, since he's underwater no, currently, it's magical fire. It wouldn't matter. I was trying to look out for you, man. Okay. So, Horum, you're going to take Fool. Sakata, you're going to take Fool as well. All right. And this also means that the baddie's going to take Fool as well. Well. Uh, 12 points of damage as fire erupts over the top of you guys. It's basically like a, just a gout of flame. Man, the moment... The moment that this creature begins to erupt into flame, its soaking withered flesh seems to just sizzle. It does not remain on fire. Horum, you're up. Right, I'm gonna hit him with a couple times if I can. Nice. That might hit. That's <laughs> that'll do, just pig. Maybe. That is that a is that a potential crit for you? Yeah, what weapon are you using? I want to say it is a potential warning. crit. Roll again to confirm, or is that your roll? I don't roll. No, that wasn't that was my second attack. Uh, okay. but I'm getting a bit of lag on my end. So, uh, yeah. what's your weapon? It's the equivalent of a greatsword. Oh, it's not yeah, sword. Yeah. It's then roll to, to confirm. Nice. That's gonna do it. Go ahead. Okay. Give me. This is gonna be stupid. <laughs> Fucking rook max rolls on it. <laughs> oh. Same thing 58. As last time. 58 points of damage as your great sword seems to come down with almost like a vorpal slice as it splits the creature in two. You hear the snapping of multiple bones as it descends downward where there was once one mummified creature here. This amalgamation is now two. Uh, the sound of it going under immediately. With combat receding, the creature falls. It'll take only a few mere seconds for everyone to begin regaining their composure. And there's Jared holding up Jared and he's like, Jared the Magnificent my ass. What? Was that not magnificent enough? Um, regaining my composure, uh, uh, Balthar will, like, shoot up, like, freak out. <laughs> and then he'll continue to run to the other side. He doesn't want to stay in this water. Okay. Yeah, once, uh, once he kind moved, I'd, uh, I kind of, like, kick this monster a little bit to make sure it was dead, because undead things tend to not stay dead, which is why they're undead. And I'm just picturing kind of the water like, in my mind, it just, like, kicking it and being like, you. Yeah. In the name of Siren Ray, who's your daddy now? Uh, I'm gonna turn to Jared. Jesus Christ. Give me one of those potions. What potions? I, Give I, me. I ain't got no potions. Give me one of those potions. I have no idea what you're talking about, bruh. I'm going to shake you down. If I will throw you into this pool. I Give got a midget. A potion. I got a midget. I this is unnecessary. Put me down, you heathen. Coming to, uh, I'll be kind of trying to squeeze Jared out of my way because he's crushing me against the wall at this point. <laughs> Can you move? Klaus, 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 tell him I'm not playing. I ain't got no potion. I'm gonna look I at saw Horm. you put them in your bag. What are you Shh. talking about? I'm gonna turn to Horn. Nothing. Help me. Okay. Uh, Jared, give him the potion now. And I, I want to try and. I wanna try because and I'm dying, you idiot. It. If I could move, I would hand you <laughs> Tortimer, but I can't. Really can't. Yeah, Jerry's just gonna go ahead and like sweep Klaus ahead. Go ahead and use the turtle, man. Yes. Nice. I'm going to get the bugbear to push you again. If you were ever going to come back out, things are a try to do down here. I think I would be best sitting in the back. We require your assistance, Tortimer. And if I 
penis yet. Not yet, but we're making progress. This is a problem. This is a vast problem. I will continue to serve you, Klaus. You must find the mighty hammer. For that they call my penis. We'll fashion something. Um... That's the spirit! With, oh no, you know what, mind. I'm not moving until I get healed by something. We have three I, sources I will of extend healing. my hand with the golden turtle. <laughs> I don't Go know on, how you to know use how to... this. I, I don't. I'm going to look at hold, it. And... Hold out your hand. Don't put your finger in there. <laughs> Again. I, will... I think that you're an idiot, but it is close as bidding. He said he would find me a penis. I'm going to uh, place Tortimer <laughs> on his outstretched hand and. Uh... If you find me a bigger penis, I will heal you much more. I'm I sorry to be not... Well, well, hey, you know, Klaus, we do have a dead body. We have a lot of dead bodies, but I don't think a human penis is going to fit on a tiny robot turtle. The only thing is, the sad man who does not believe in science. Where there is a will, there is a way. My father told me. I can't fuse skin with metal. That's not in my wheelhouse. Hey, hey, hey. We, it's we also got, decomposing. We got, some, we, got some, we got a little bit of rope. We can go ahead and thread it out a little bit and just, like, make a little... No, 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 no. I'm going to no, continue to making, slowly bleed. He's, he's I'm, I'm so just going to press the button on his back while he's sitting on his hand. <laughs> I'm going to... I'm going to pat him on... I'm going to pat... Uh, Sakata on the shoulder and use a lay on hands as I walk past towards the exit. Thank you. Because <laughs> I'm tired of hearing the argument anymore. Um, I was gonna ask, would I notice? Would I have time to check Much to see if uh, my supplies were in this room? Your supplies are 100% not in this room. Yeah. They're actually on the zombie. And if they were, you wouldn't smell anything over the smell of damp rot. Hey, look at that! I hear the dice are random, and that's totally average. Was that the the heal from the turtle? Yes. Okay. Thank you. I'm no longer on Death's Edge. I'm going to glare at Sniper and say, I swear to God, next time I ask for a potion, don't act like we don't have any. I'm going to turn around and walk out the room. Please. Do you think I'm supposed to act for my penis? Do I have to be a full-on idiot, an imbecile, if you will? Do we do we do we do we yeah. Probably. I couldn't hear you. What was that? Do we begin demanding things? Will that make this a much faster process? I don't think that will, no. I can try and attach a human penis to your body, but I don't think it's going to work. And frankly, you would not exactly enjoy the benefits of your own functioning penis. Honestly, I don't see why you guys just don't 